Okay, so here is a typical model that has been exported out of Countersketch. As you can see, uh, when we shade it up, um, it's uh, the this particular export hasn't had the prongs extended for manufacturing. Uh, that's the very first thing that you're going to need to do. So uh, what we're going to do is going to select the claws there. We're going to go to Transform, Cage Edit, Bounding Box, World, and leave all the options as they are. Hit Enter twice, and then we can just simply select these control points and just raise the um, claws up. To get rid of that we just hit escape and then just select the control box and hit delete. When we have a look in perspective viewport you can see what we end up with. Now the thing that you have to remember with counter sketch files is that none of the azures or gems are cut into that. As you can see when we hide the gemstone there nothing's cut in. To make it a little bit easier for the customer I would always recommend you select the gem F6 and go down to your gem cutter and we can select say this guy here and cut that in that's going to make it uh, a lot easier for your customer we go to tools menu and or cutters menu and boolean builder select your cutter and select these pieces here and put them into the object window one by one force boolean and boolean away so when we hide that gem you can see we've got those seats all cut out nicely for the customer. Uh, obviously we don't need that stone anymore so we can delete it. The other thing that you need to consider is that when you bring in a file from Countersketch nothing is joined. If it's a 3DM file nothing will be joined. Reason for that is it's a lot easier to make tweaks to the file in this format here. Um, they have the option of sending you an STL file that has had mesh repair done on it but if they do need some tweaks uh, we are teaching them to uh, send as a 3DM file. As far as you're concerned, all you need to do is select everything there and hit join. That's going to join everything up. And if it doesn't, like that, then if you're using version 8 or matrix version 8, simply select everything and run it through your tools menu and mesh repair. Select delete input objects on so that it doesn't duplicate anything. Hit enter that's going to repair that mesh and it's ready to go. As you can see by the progress bar here once it gets to 100% you'll see a window will come up. You can check that it's a good mesh simply by click clicking on the check mesh. You get that option there that everything's all good to go. That's now a mesh file. It's been all watertight and uh, boolean together for you. Then you can run it through your support engine. In Matrix we have our 3D printing tool. We can select the show support regions, add the object and what it's going to show there is anything that's red needs to be supported. We can then create our sprue. Obviously our options to change the sprue are up in the command line here. Once you're happy with all of that we can select the inner Turn your mirror X on. Turn your mirror Y on. If you wanted to do this, I probably wouldn't worry about it myself, but and then we can adjust the width of this down. And hit enter. And then what you can do is run that through your mesh repair again. Enter. And that will just make sure that all of these supports are included in the mesh as well. Once that's finished, we can hit check mesh. We'll get another, this is a good mesh option. And there you have it, it's ready to go. So let's have a look at another file. We're going to go to File, Open, and select, say, uh, maybe this one here. Let's uh, shade that up. As you can see, we have no azures uh, 
created so you'd want to actually create the ashes these prongs here are meshes and so what you may be better off doing is either running this entire thing through mesh repair as you can see the prongs on this particular one when we've uh, hit extend prongs in counter sketch it's extended those prongs so you can run your gem builder for those uh, but as I said with these guys here they're all prongs so you can do one of two things and this is what I tend to do is select those and I delete them and then I select my gems again F6 and go to prongs it's going to bring out our prong builder which we only need to make some slight adjustments to increase the depth decrease that prong height a little and once you're happy with that then you've got all poly surfaces that you can select all your gems, create gem cutters for and boolean away then you'd run it all through the mesh repair function again as I said all of these are not joined and that's all you've got to do hope that helps